like all other heart surgeons, we were trained to split the sternum. And uh, it was great for the surgeon, but not good for the patient. So late in the 90s, decided to find ways to do operations without splitting the sternum. And so I developed an approach through thoracotomy and did over 1,000 or so operations, whereby we did up to six bypasses. Patients went home two to three days later and back to the functional recovery one to two weeks. And that was great except we were still making incisions. So in 2002, I built a hospital in West Texas, Odessa, Texas, and we purchased the Da Vinci robotic system. The whole idea was if we can do entire operation through tiny incisions, completely closed chest, and to be able to do complex heart surgeries that way, it would be wonderful for the patients because we could not do them endoscopically otherwise. So we needed certain attributes like 3D vision, research instruments, magnification, tremor filtration to be able to do very fine uh, tasks. So we adopted that and uh, I trained a lot of people. I was part of the trial for Da Vinci that time. Did While I was in US, uh, did over 1400 robotic cardiac cases. So while I was in practice, that was the largest experience and pioneered a lot of uh, uh, what I call the totally endoscopic bypass surgery procedures those days. So huge benefits and that's what kept me going in relation to you know pushing the envelope for robotic cardiac surgery. Well I'm guessing that not unlike the urologist there was a lot of colleagues in your specialty that pushed back against robotics. Yes, I will give you a, a quick example. Trained over 350 surgical teams the initial adoption was 10%. After three months, it dropped to 5%. Because of various reasons, the early days, robotic uh, cardiac surgery, we, it's a very high risk operation. Uh, we can cause some issues if we don't do it correctly. And the enabling technologies were not there, which really are required for the surgeon. So to be able to operate on a beating heart with without being on the table side and away from the patient. Uh, patients, uh, basically the surgeons felt very uncomfortable. And unfortunately, at a point in time, then uh, uh, Da Vinci that used to make certain instrumentation, they stopped making those also. So yes, there was a lot of pushback because one, there was no pressure on the surgeons. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if the technology is not available easily and doesn't have the user-friendly features, or if the procedures are hard for the surgeon, they just don't do it. And this is where, unfortunately, the cardiac surgery particularly became only surgeon-specific and very small number of surgeons. So this is where I decided to really get involved uh, beyond my professional surgical career into developing a new surgical robotic system that not only will be a very affordable system with many more advanced features, but also revive the cardiac field. So we have created, uh, you know, through our organization called SS Innovations, uh, SSI Mantra system that was developed in India by completely a team of young engineers in India and it is less than half to one third the cost. Wow. And with all instrumentations and more advanced and better features uh, that are very user friendly, shortens the learning curve. And these technology features are be way beyond what Da Vinci earlier had. So one of the things that as a new company, it's easier for to incorporate the latest. We embrace new innovations and technology. Technology that makes it possible to extend our capabilities beyond our imagination. It gave us an opportunity where we are today with a lot of new things that are available. So we can make it cheaper, better, and more specialties including heart surgery. So the system basically will do everything and cardiac. SSI Mantra's 3D vision, instrumental precision, and advanced indigenous technology is all set to herald the future of surgery in the Indian subcontinent and across the globe. The entire mantra system has been developed by a team in India, made in India for the world. Uh, there are, of course, today many other robotic companies, but yes, this will give Da Vinci a very direct competition 
uh, mainly for two reasons. So if you take uh, and I'm very grateful to Da Vinci, I think, as a company. They led a different pathway. But only observation is that system became quite expensive. So there was a very uneven distribution globally. So almost like 90% of the systems installed today are in the United States, Europe, and Japan. That means 10% penetration for 7 billion people. If you take India as an example, with almost four times the population of the United States, there are only around 150 total systems over the last 20 years. So patients don't have access, surgeons don't have access. So the whole idea was to literally create something different, which we can do now, uh, and uh, at, a, at a lower cost with very advanced features. We've been able to succeed. I think in future, this machine is going to be uh, into not only it will change the scene of robotic surgery uh, in, in India, but I think it is abroad also. This is my first time in overseas. I have been aware of uh, Dr. Alex Moitre for a long time. First time I got to meet him. I know uh, Raj Vatikuti and Dr. Bhandari for also a very long time. And I think what I see is a beautiful training facility, which is technology agnostic, using the latest and the best methods to impart knowledge. And conferences like this that I'm observing, so many different specialties are here. So many different topics are being covered, which otherwise uh, people will not have access. So in a very short, compressed time, suddenly there's a huge exposure for people to learn and also to see what is the latest. Uh, and I think this platform does allow that. And uh, you know, I'm very familiar with Dr. Moitri is trying to do. I think it's a great service because ultimately the education, the correct training, bringing people up is the most important thing anytime we introduce new ways of doing operations. So you're probably going to try and get some of your equipment here with them. As yes, as time as uh, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, uh, I had a conversation with Dr. Moitri very briefly, and we do plan to have our mantra system here. It again gives a wonderful exposure to so many people who come from around the world for training. What do you think about what the Vatikuti Foundation has accomplished? Uh, I think it is great. Uh, you know, I've known Raj, uh, met him many times in the past when I was in U.S. And uh, I think uh, he's got a tremendous philanthropic angle. Uh, I think uh, it is nice when you have the money to be able to put it to good use. And I think this foundation is doing tremendous work in you know, promoting education, adoption of new technology, promoting innovation. And I think it's a very, very noble cause that they have undertaken.